let's get our player set up and moving around the room. So over here in our assets I have a new sprite player and this is 64 by 32 and it is just a little rocket ship. Now I want to give this a special origin point because this is where I'm going to want the lasers to shoot from and on our ship I want that to come from the nose. Your ship might be different, maybe you'll have a gun on the bottom or on the top. I've talked before about hitting this center button to move the origin point to the center of the sprite and also entering it in manually but you can also come to the image itself and just start dragging around and you see the little crosshairs or maybe you don't I'm not sure what you'll see on the video but you can see down there in the origin box the coordinates are changing so you don't have to necessarily know the exact coordinates right off the bat you can just move this around to where you need it I'm gonna have mine here which I'm actually going to change to 64 16 and that'll work for me but I'm also going to give it a special collision box because you can see we've got some strange white space around the ship and I don't want a bullet to actually count as hitting us if it hits in this empty space. So I'm going to open up the modify mask and I could use the precise collision checking so that it would actually outline it exactly but I don't want that. Instead I want a custom box around this. Now just like with the origin point you can actually draw it in on the image itself, if you check the manual toggle in the bounding box settings, you can actually just come in here and draw the bounding box where you want it. That's actually pretty close to where I want it. I'm going to fine tune it a little bit more, set it to 0, and set this to, say, 26. That'll be good for me. The reason I'm doing this rather than having it precisely connected to the outline of my ship is just because I don't want these little stray pixels way out at the end to maybe snag on an enemy or part of the stage. I want just a little bit of leeway so I can narrowly scrape by something if I have to because there's going to be a lot of stuff on screen and so part of the game is going to be dodging a lot of things. So I don't want just a little tiny nick at the top of the sprite to blow me up. And in fact, I think I'm going to change this to a top of four. That looks a little bit better. So we can hit OK, and that should be good for this sprite. Hit OK, and I have another sprite that's almost identical called Sprite Player Thrust. Now if I open up the Edit Sprite here, you can see I've got two different images, and they both have a little flame. The original sprite player does not have that flame, and I'm only going to use this flame sprite when the ship moves forward. But if I show a preview here, you can see that the little flame flickers really fast. In fact, it's too fast for what I want. If I bring the bottom of the window up here, you can see that we are going at a speed of 30 frames per second, and this correlates to the speed of our room. If I turn this down to about half that, you might be able to notice that it's going slightly slower. Now as this warns us, this is not the speed in the game, this is only for the preview. But we can change the speed once we actually use this sprite in the game, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. So this is the same dimensions, 64 by 32, and it has that origin point at 6416, as well as the special modified mask that I made. And I've created an object player in the objects, and that uses our sprite player sprite and is visible. So let's begin setting up the movement for our object player. Now if you want to, you can use the same system that we set up in our previous games where we had the walls along the outside of the room and we set up that system where it would check to see whether it could move and all that stuff. But I'm going to show you yet another way of moving the player and keeping them with inside the room, but this time without using those wall objects. So let's start with the up and down first. We'll add event, keyboard, up. And we're going to come over to control and we're going to check for a variable. We're going to check the variable y and see if it is greater than the value of sprite underscore height divided by two. Sprite height is a built-in game maker property corresponding to the height of our sprite, which in this case is 32 pixels. So 32 divided by 2 will test to see if y is greater than 16. The origin point of our sprite is set at a y of 16, which is the halfway point, and that's why I'm checking by dividing height, sprite height by 2. 
So click OK. And if it is greater than halfway of our sprite away from the edge, then we can allow it to move. So come to our Move tab, come down to Jump, Jump to Position, and we will give it a Y of negative 10, because negative on the Y goes up. We also want to be sure to check Relative, because we are subtracting this from its current position. So click OK. And now let's add Event Keyboard Down. Come to Control, and we're going to test for another variable. This time it is going to be a combination of things. It is going to be Y plus parentheses sprite underscore height divided by 2 close parentheses. Since the sprite's Y position is at 16 and sprite height divided by 2 also equals 16, this will equal 32 or the bottom edge of our sprite. The value we are checking against is going to be room underscore height and we are going to see if it is less than. Room height is another built-in game maker property testing the height of the room. Click OK, come back to the move tab, get our jump to position and give it a Y of positive 10 and set to relative. So that'll take us vertically. Let's go horizontally now. Add an event, keyboard, this time left. Come over to control, test variable, and we are going to test the variable x, and we will make sure it is greater than the value of sprite underscore width. Sprite width, again, being another built-in property, and the reason we're testing to see if our x position is greater than the width of our sprite, which in this case is 64 pixels, is because we set the origin point on the very right side of our sprite. So by making sure that our x position is greater than the width of the sprite, it means that we will always have the full sprite on screen. So let's click OK, and if this condition is met, we will allow it to move, jump to position, and on the x we're going to give it a negative 8. The reason this is 8 and not 10 is because I want it to be a little bit slower when a player backs off. So if they get too far forward, they might overextend themselves and it'll be harder for them to back off and get out of danger. But let's make sure we tick this relative box and click OK. We have one final direction, add event, keyboard, right, and this one is going to be just a little bit different because when we go forward I want it to play that sprite player thrust that we created. So let's get that going first. It's in the main one tab in the sprite category. We want this Pac-Man change sprite. Drag that over and the sprite that we want is this sprite player thrust. Now remember, we have two sub-images in that sprite that just repeat and make that flickering flame come out the back. But to get them to play infinitely in a loop, we need to set our sub-image to a negative one. And that way it will play through all of the images in that sprite. And I mentioned earlier that I wanted to slow that speed down at which it was playing because I didn't want it to flicker that fast. And we can do that in the speed here by giving it a value between 0 and 1. 1, of course, being 100% speed. So let's slow it down by, say, a third. So I'm going to give it a speed of 0.66. Click OK. And now we set up the movement controls like before. We come to Control, test for a variable. We are going to test variable x and make sure it is less than or equal to the value of a room underscore width. Remember that because our origin point is on the very right edge of the sprite, it can butt right up against the end of the room. So that's why we're setting this to less than or equal to. Click OK, and we can come to the Move tab, jump to Position, and set a positive 10 on the X, relative OK. And there's one final thing we need to do. Because we are changing the sprite as soon as we hit this right key, it is changing that sprite permanently to player thrust. I only want it to play that sprite when we're holding the key down, but right now, as soon as we change it into sprite player thrust, it'll just keep that flame all the time. So to change it back, we need to come down to Add Event, and instead of a keyboard event, we're going to come over here to the key release. And this 
event happens when you take your finger off the key. So hit that and we want key release right. And then we just need to change the sprite back. So come over to main one, come down to our change sprite, and we will select the original sprite player. Sub image zero, speed one, okay. And that should be it. So close the object and then let's open our room and add our player object into the room. Click the tick mark and let's test it. Okay, so here we are and I move forward and you see it thrusts and as soon as I stop it turns off. We move up, we move all around and when I move back I move slightly slower than when I move forward. I can slow that down even more if I wanted, but for right now it works. And let's test our boundaries. It stops, it stops, stops on the left, and stops on the right. And because of the way it's set up, the flame will still go because I'm holding down the key. As soon as I stop, it lets go. But you also notice that we are kind of going off the screen here. It's not precisely lining up with the edge. Sometimes it is, like now, and sometimes it's not. And that's just because of the different amount of pixels that we are moving forward and the various calculations. I talked about this before in the earlier games as to why this was happening. Uh, if that really bothers you though you can just go back to the old way and set up the walls and then it will definitely collide precisely with the edge of the room. We could also come back into our object and tweak it just a little bit So say if I came to our right and came to our room width, I could say room width minus six, and that might offset it by six pixels, so we wouldn't go completely off the edge. It's up to you though. But we can move the player. Now we should look at getting the player to fire a laser. 